We're on our way to the small town of Dewey, Oklahoma. We're going to visit the Tum Mix Museum. Here we are going through Memphis, Tennessee, and we're going to cross over into Arkansas and later into Oklahoma. And I'll try to stop from time to time to show more of the Oklahoma landscape. Now, Tom Mix was the top cowboy film star of the early 20th century. He made more than 300 movies. Most of them were silent films. But his last nine was talkies. Tom made his first short film in 1909 and his last movie in 1935. He made over $6 million during his career. But his lavish lifestyle, the five wives, and also the stock market crash left him with modest means by the time of his death. Tom Mix was born Thomas Hezekiah Mix on January the 6th, 1880. He hated the name Hezekiah and always used his dad's first name, Edwin, as his second name. Tom was born in the community of Mix Run some five miles west of the town of Driftwood, Pennsylvania. But he always told people he was from Texas. Now this is one of the earliest pictures of Tom. He had one younger sister, Caroline Esther, born one year after Tom in 1881. And they had one older brother, Harry, born in 1874, but passed away on the 20th of July, 1911, at the age of 37 at a sanatorium in Washington, D.C. from tuberculosis. He also had an older sister named Emma Laura. She was born the 26th of October, 1877. Tom's parents was Edwin and Elizabeth Mix. Now, Edwin was a stable manager for a wealthy lumber merchant, so Tom grew up around horses. And as a youngster, he'd work on local farms and he always dreamed of being a circus performer. He was even caught by his parents throwing a real knife at the barn wall and using his younger sister Esther as an unwilling assistant. Like most boys of his day, Tom never finished grade school, but here he is in the third grade. He's the third from the left on the first row. In 1898, at the age of 18, Tom enlisted in the Army. He eventually made a sergeant, and after three years, he left the service and was discharged on April the 25th, 1901. But he soon re-enlisted for another three years. Within a year after re-enlisting, Tom went on an extended 15-day leave. And while on leave, he met a pretty young girl by the name of Grace Allen. On his next leave, he and Grace married on July the 18th, 1902. Tom returned to duty after the honeymoon, but three months later, Grace gave Tom an ultimatum, either the Army or me. He was classified as AWOL on the 4th of November, 1902. Tom was never court-martialed, though, or discharged, because later he became so famous from his films and publicity that the studio put out, the public thought he was a military hero even riding with Roosevelt's Rough Riders in Cuba and becoming a Texas Ranger. In fact, he served as a town marshal or night watchman for a few months in Dewey, Oklahoma. At his death, they gave him a full military barrel, and it was years later that the military revealed the truth. Now, to hide from the military, Tom and Grace ended up in Guthrie, Oklahoma. He worked as a bartender at the famous Blue Bell Saloon, and he performed several other jobs. Grace was not satisfied with the Western lifestyle, being a city girl. And within a year, she went home to her family, and her father had the marriage annulled when he discovered that Tom was AWOL from the military. Within two years after the annulment from Grace, Tom married Jewel Kitty Perrine in Oklahoma City, on December the 20th, 1905, at the Perrine Hotel owned by Kitty's father. The two lived there at the hotel for a while, until Tom gets a job at the Miller Brothers 101 Ranch as a wrangler. Kitty continued to live in Oklahoma City while Tom was working and living at the ranch. Part of Tom's job was to escort ranch guests 
around and share the ranch history with the visitors. The 101 was one of the largest ranches in Oklahoma. It even had a Wild West traveling show, which Tom will eventually join. In the meantime, Kitty was left wondering if she had a husband or not. So she soon filed for divorce in 1906 after less than a year's marriage. After the divorce from Kitty, he became real acquainted with Olive Stokes, who performed as a cowgirl in a Wild West show. After a short courtship and on January the 19th, 1909, the two were married in Medora, North Dakota, while they were performing together. During her eight-year marriage to Tom Mix, Olive will appear in eight movies, mostly silent films, with her husband. In 1911, it was Dead's Girl, and her last movie was The Single Code in 1917, the year that she divorced Tom. During Tom and Olive's marriage, in 1909, he won the National Riding and Roping Contest at Prescott, Arizona. And the next year, in 1910, he won again at Cannon City, Colorado. Tom soon caught the attention of Sealin Polyscope Film Company while they were filming at the 101 Ranch. They was always looking for horses and cowboys for their fledgling western short films. Tom began as a wrangler at first, but soon was a supporting cast member. His first supporting film was The Cowboy Millionaire, released on October the 21st, 1909. Now, Tom gained attention of the film company when he rode a horse off of a 30-foot cliff. The next year, Tom will play as himself in the short documentary film, Ranch Life in the Great Southwest. The film was a success, and Tom Mix was on his way to becoming a B-Western movie star. In time, Tom Mix will become very wealthy and famous. But to start with, although he was making films, he still had to work other jobs. Tom and Olive was on the Wild West show circuit when she became pregnant. Tom decided that they should go back to Oklahoma and Olive should be around her family and that he would become a family man with a normal job. Now this is the Tom Mix Museum in Dewey, Oklahoma, Olive's hometown. In 19 and 12, Tom and Olive was living with her parents on their ranch just outside of Dewey. Ollie's family were friends with the town mayor, who appointed Tom town night marshal. Oklahoma was in the oil boom at the time, and Tom had his hands full handling drunks and rowdy roustabouts. The museum has a full collection of original Tom Mix items, and even a replica of Tom's famous horse, Tony. On the 13th of July, 1912, Tom and Olive had a daughter, Nadine Ruth Mix, born at the family ranch. Ruth will grow up and follow her parents in the movie business, becoming an actress. She will even travel with her father in 1936's Wild West show and retire to private life after her father's death. In 1917, Tom divorced Olive after eight years of marriage. Also that same year, Polyscope Films informed Mix that they were going broke. So Tom signed with Fox Film Corporation. Just as Tom went to work for Fox, he lost Old Blue, his horse that he had used for years. It's said that Tom paid $600 for Tony, and Tony would become almost as famous as Tom. He would perform every trick that Mix asked him to do. And he'll be in 181 movies with Tom. Here he is in 1919 jumping through a window in the movie Hell Roaring Reform. Tom and Tony did all their own stunts. In 1932, Tony will be retired after 22 years. He injured his hip performing a movie stunt with Tom riding. Tony will die in 1944 at the age of 34. In 1918, the next year after Mix's divorce from Olive, he'll marry Victoria Ford. They will continue making movies together. And on the 12th of February, 1922, 
Tom and Victoria will have a daughter. They'll name her Thomasina Victoria Mix. Victoria will give up her acting career to take care of her daughter and to make a home for Tom. The year Thomasina was born, Tom was making most of his films at the studio called Mixville at Silver Lake. He also rented this bungalow at 1610 Golden Gate Avenue near Los Angeles. And during the next years, Tom Mix will become an iconic Western cowboy star. Wearing flamboyant Western clothes, including a white 10-gallon hat and shiny boots, and also expensive cars. It was said that he even put a flashing sign on top of his house saying, Tom Mix. In 1924, Tom Victoria and Thomasina bought this house at 1018 Summit Drive in Beverly Hills. In 1928, after 11 years and 86 films with Fox, Mix moved to the FBO Pictures for a series of five films. Talkies was coming in, and Tom was a silent film star. Plus, he's getting older. He went back to the Wild West tours. In 1929, a good friend of his passed away. He had become close to the historic lawman, Wyatt Earp. Tom served as Wyatt's pallbearer. Now here he is with the other pallbearers. Tom is the one standing on the far right. It's been said that Tom Mix wept at Wyatt Earp's funeral. In 1988, the movie Sunset depicted the friendship between Mix and Earp. Bruce Willis played Tom Mix and James Gardner as Wyatt Earp. Also in 1929, when the stock market crashed, Mix lost most of his fortune. He spent two years working with the Wild West shows. It is said that Tom was making 20000 per week with his own railroad car and also one for Tony. It was what Tom Mick really loved. It was far enough from the crowd, no one can see that he was getting older. And he loved the applause of the crowd. He had given up the movies when in 1931, he got a call to come back and do five more. In 1931 also, Tom will be sued for divorce and child custody by his wife, Victoria Foot Mix. Now, Tom had to protect his movie image. He had always been seen by his little fans as a cowboy hero that they could look up to. However, his personal life was much more on the human level. It seemed that Victoria had caught her husband with other women. She began shooting up his 1929 Duesenberg automobile. And as he ran out of the house to stop her, she shot him twice with her trusty 38 coat. He was rushed to the Clara Barton Hospital in Hollywood. It cost him and Fox Studios plenty to keep the story covered up. The doctors thought he was going to die. They even had his death certificate wrote out, but didn't have to sign it. He recovered. On February the 15th, 1932, Tom wasted no time and married Mabel Ward, a circus aerialist in Yuma, Arizona. And in 1933, Tom signed a contract with Ralston Perina Company to produce a radio program entitled Tom Mixes Ralston Straight Shooters. The program will last for 10 years, even after Tom's death because he never appeared on the show. An actor played Tom Mix. In 1935, Tom Mix will appear in his last film, The Miracle Rider. At the age of 55, Tom starred in his own Wild West Circus. However, it was still in the Depression years and the circus was losing money. Although money was becoming scarce, Tom continued to be his extravagant self. Like the 1937 yellow cord Phantom supercharger convertible that he drove. Only 191 were ever made. According to his daughter Thomasina, her dad had a gun mounted under the steering wheel. And he would tell her to grab the wheel while he grabbed his gun and started shooting rabbits and road signs. It scared her to death. 
On the 12th of October, 1940, around 1 p.m., Tom Mix left his Tucson, Arizona hotel at the St. Regis, wearing his 10-gallon trademark hat on his way to Phoenix with a stopover in Florence, Arizona. Mix was serving as an advance agent for a Western circus that was to appear there pretty soon. It's believed that he intended to stop and see his daughter Thomasia's ex-husband, a world champion bronco rider that was living in Florence. Tom Mix was driving at a high rate of speed on a dirt road with what is now Highway 79, somewhere between mile marker 115 and 116, some 16 miles south of Florence, Arizona. He had no way of knowing a flash flood had washed out a bridge across a wash. The repair crew was replacing the bridge and had barricades up across the road. Road workers saw the yellow cord phantom racing toward them from the dust that it was raising. They began waving their hands and trying to stop the driver. They had warning signs up, but the driver, they said, seemed to ignore it. When he saw the barricades, he tried to stop, but it was too late. The Phantom crashed through the barricades and plunged into the dry wash that at the time was around 10 feet deep and turned on its side. This wash is now called Tom Mix Wash. Workers say that Mix apparently was not hurt very bad, but he was laying with his face in the dust and his metal suitcase was laying on his neck. Now this is the suitcases that was riding with Tom Mix that day. They're at the Tom Mix Museum in Dewey. Tom had the suitcases designed and made special for him as he did other things. Workers said that Tom stood up and took one step and fell dead. Doctors said that the loose suitcases that he had just thrown in the back seat had struck him in the back of the head from the impact and had broken his neck that killed him. Strange enough, it was the small suitcase that did it. Now this nine foot monument was placed a few hundred feet from the wash. A metal horse called Tony was placed on the monument. The Tom Mix Memorial was dedicated by cowboy star Gene Autry. Tom Mix and his horse Tony left their impressions in concrete in front of Grumman's Chinese Theater on December the 12th, 1927 at 6925 Hollywood Boulevard. His star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame is located on the east side of 1708 block of Vine Street. Thomas Hezekiah Mix, the first cowboy superstar of the silent screen, is buried at the Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery in Glendale, California. Tom Mix was 60 years old.